It is deeply troubling to me that Bible prophecy is absent from the pulpits because pastors view it as confusing or controversial or divisive and they're you know this type of person just really grinds my gears this little miss smug lady her name is michelle she does a lot of videos like this where she she scolds people stares deeply and intently into the camera makes little smirky faces while she talks like she knows so much you know and so it just really irritates me not only do we have to endure endless failed predictions by sensationalist liars on social media who make predictions in the name of god that fail so that you know christians look like drooling morons right we have to put up with all that crap we also have to endure insufferable scoldings from people like this woman you know starting with her title i am deeply troubled oh wow really really about what about about pastors not doing what you think they should do hey gather round all you pastors we surely need to listen to this soccer mom something is deeply troubling her so afraid of offending people and that people won't show up to their church services if they talk about it because they might be scared uh, because they don't understand it but it's their job to explain it and explain the fact that as believers we have nothing to fear it's the most exciting, incredible time to be alive during the end times, during these days where Bible prophecy is literally unfolding. Oh, I see. So let's get every pastor in the world who doesn't do a weekly prophecy update to listen to this smug person. Maybe they'll finally wake up and do what she wants. So she says in her video, help me understand. Help me understand. I don't get it. All right. Do you really want to understand? Will you listen? First of all, I know how you're defining Bible prophecy. You don't mean the biblical definition of Bible prophecy. You mean endless weekly hype, sensationalism, speculation based on news events about when Jesus will come and get us. You mean ongoing fantasy stories whereby pastors are supposed to promise their audience they will soon be whisked to heaven out of their troubles? But see, that's not Bible prophecy. Bible prophecy is what God has said in the Bible. Not what end times hype purveyors say about news events. So somebody please tell me why the message of the king is coming is not welcome in church with immense joy. And um, all churches say that. So you're just lying. That's a straw man argument. No churches, no churches avoid that subject. What they avoid is the king is coming soon. And everybody gear up and get ready because you're going to go to heaven without dying. And I know this because the news is telling us that. That's what people are against. And you know it. You know the difference. And why is it that countless churchgoers aren't excited and longing to be with their king the bible says they are ex they are excited you can be excited without predicting i'm excited i'm looking forward to it i'm anticipating it i'm loving it i'm hoping it will happen i just don't predict when and i don't get on on youtube and publicly declare when and and no pastor should be standing behind a pulpit and opening up the news and speculating about when because that's no place for speculation the pulpit is for truth. Speculation isn't truth. It's his own opinion. And, and it's always been wrong, by the way. So it really shouldn't be in the pulpit. And if anybody in the audience believes it's soon, that's fine. They can believe it's soon all they want. Just keep their mouths shut. That there will be a falling away from sound doctrine in the last days. You don't think we're here? Maybe this explains why there is false doctrines like preterism and there is no rapture many preachers and i've heard them sitting in a church i've heard them warn people to stay away from bible prophecy F nonsense i guarantee you no preacher has said that they have said don't speculate about it 
Don't get on these bandwagons where people are talking about blood moons mean it's the end, or the Revelation 12 sign means it's the end, or war in Israel means it's the end. Endless, endless speculations. Again, see, this smug little person is a little liar. She knows that's what they're talking about. And it's like, really, lady? What do, what do you want? You want more of that? You want more Revelation 12 theories floating around the church? You want 100,000 North American churches constantly hyping some new news event that is soon, it's soon, it's soon. That's, that's what you want? You think that's going to really solve the issues the church has? Because it's just too hard to understand. And this baffles me because I'm sorry. Don't we have the Holy Spirit in us? The Are you literally seriously going to claim that the Holy Spirit is the one telling, I don't know, Barry Scarborough that his dream that he had five years ago where he was raptured while he was visiting his parents in Texas was actually from the Holy Spirit and it actually meant something? Or that J.D. Farag four years ago stated unequivocally that we would be raptured before the vaccines came out? I mean, I could go on. There's hundreds of thousands of claims that you people have made over the years that have all been proven wrong, proven wrong. There's no doubt. But they were made in God's name, ostensibly, because the Holy Spirit told them to say it, and they were false. I don't call that Holy Spirit. I call that taking the Lord's name in vain. You are supporting people who stand behind a pulpit and literally disobey the third commandment. A revealer of all truth? Wow. Someone please give me the verse that says that the rapture of the church and the Lord's second coming are none of our business. Especially when 2 <laughs> Timothy 4.8 says that there is a crown oh, stored so up for all those who love and long for his appearing. Now, of course, she just misquotes that entirely. The verse says, those who love his appearing. There's a crown for those who love his appearing. That's it. It doesn't say those, there's a crown for those who predict the rapture. It's just stop it. You know, the, the same tired arguments over and over again. Where does the Bible say that it's none of our business? Well, the Bible doesn't say there's actually a rapture to heaven before a seven-year tribulation anyway. So how is it going to say it's none of our business? You guys made up that entire scenario. I, I think I think it's self-evident, Little Miss Smug, that it is none of our business because there's a hundred thousand people on YouTube today yapping and telling people in, that their dreams mean the rapture is soon or they thought about a movie the other day and lo and behold that movie was playing on HBO that night so therefore the rapture is soon or this 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 heavenly body changed color. Therefore, the rapture is soon, or whatever. My big toe hurt this morning, and I, I saw the number three three times. I mean, hundreds of thousands of these people making total asses out of the Christian church. And you're going to sit there and defend that and call that like, well, it's really our business to care. Those people are getting their crowns. You're not. Are you serious? H have I explained enough, lady, or are you still confused well we'll go on and when we talk about the rapture so many people truly believe that that is a deflection a diversion from satan folks mm. <laughs> jesus commands us to be watching for his return and well at least you didn't flat out lie and say folks mm -hmm. jesus commands us to talk about the rapture all the time jesus commands us to tell each other how soon we'll be raptured and promise people from behind the pulpit they'll be raptured. Jesus command. At least you didn't say that. But that's what's going on and that's what's wrong. Yes, it is a deflection. It's absolutely escapism. You people want to get out of here now. You want to leave this life. You don't like this life. You don't like this world. You, you don't... You, you Come quickly, Lord Jesus. Are we in the tribulation right now? Well, no. Well, then why are you telling him to come quickly? It's not He's not going to come until the tribulation is upon us. So you're not trying to escape the seven-year tribulation. You're trying to escape right now. 
tribulation. Tickling those ears, too afraid of offending someone's feelings. Really? It's not ear tickling to promise somebody, hey, sooner than later you're going to be off this planet and won't have to deal with your problems anymore. I promise you, I know that because look what the news says. That's not ear tickling? And praying about it. Let's remember that Jesus rebuked the Pharisees in Matthew 16 because they could discern the weather, but not the times that we are in. And the devil... Well, that they were in. They couldn't discern the times they were in that he was the Son of God physically in front of them. He didn't rebuke them because um, they weren't watching the news prior to him coming. <laughs> he didn't rebuke them because they didn't speculate about when he would come. He rebuked them because he's standing right in front of them showing them signs of him being Messiah by healing people. And rather than, or just, or just all the other things in the scripture that he fulfilled, and rather than believing based on that, like they should have, the Pharisees were asking him for a sign from heaven. They wanted a supernatural sign right from the sky that God was saying, this is the Messiah. That's what he was rebuking them for. It's these people constantly twist the scripture. I, again, Michelle, what do you want? Just honestly, what do you actually want people to do, and why? What is your motivation? Are you angry at me because my church of three hundred people here in Ohio, um, with a pastor who never has ever ever done a prophecy update in his life and never will, but yet? opens the word of God every Sunday and speaks from it, and many times Bible prophecy is talked about, which again, it's, it's what God has said throughout the scripture. Not what you say, what God has said. Are you angry at us because we're doing that and not doing what you want? And, and what exactly do you want out of it? Do you think our church will just catch fire? Finally catch fire and do its job if our pastor starts sensationalizing news events H how do you figure that is using today preterists and post tribbers <gasps> to Ooh. rob followers of christ of their blessed hope to using today but not the times that we are in and the devil is using today preterists and post tribbers to rob followers of christ of their blessed hope that's impossible. The blessed hope is the appearing of Christ, not the disappearing of the church into heaven prior to a, ra a, a, a tribulation, not the disappearance of all of us out of our troubles. The blessed hope is the appearing of Christ. And one could say it's the, you know, you could stretch that out to mean the resurrection and our new bodies. It's never mentioned that a rapture to heaven of the church is our blessed hope. And I find it interesting that she's complaining about post tribbers and preterists and whatnot and obviously obviously these people are feeling threatened and that's good because finally finally this nonsensical doctrine is getting really stomped on and i hope it continues i'm going to help i i i hope to burn down this entire dispensational nonsense and stomp on its ashes so that it never comes back because it's heretical this woman is involved in heresy. She doesn't even know it. And, and and I it's likely that she is so upset about all this because she's getting pushback from people like, hey, stop talking about this stuff all the time. You're, you're actually killing your own doctrine by talking about it all the time because the more you guys keep, keep promising a rapture that never happens, the more people are going to start saying, you know what, I don't think I believe this at all. But they don't get that. That's how blind they are. That's how blind. Every pre-tribber should be angry at people like her and angry at people like Farag and Tom Cody because they constantly promise a rapture every day that never happens. And it's killing the doctrine entirely. It is dwindle it's already dwindling because it's stupid and unbiblical. But they're killing it faster by burning their fuel up all day long every day, promising that never happens. So... She's getting pushed back, and she's all angry about it. So she's going to go on a rant here because she wants everyone to support her. That's really what this is about. She doesn't, she doesn't care what happens with the church. She doesn't care about the truth. She doesn't care about glorifying God because none of this glorifies him. None of this talk about rapture soon glorifies Christ at all. 
It's all about us. It's all about you. It's all about us getting out of here. That's what she cares but about. Revelation 3.11 says, Jesus tells us, Behold, I am coming quickly. Hmm. Hold fast to what you have, that no one may take your crown. Which crown is that? That's the crown in 2 Timothy 4.8. Oh, okay. That is stored uh, okay. yeah, up we'll just for those say, who long for his appearing. You've got to be kidding me. That's just absolute blasphemy. She just makes it up. Yeah, that, that crown is the same one as in 2 Timothy. And, and then that crown is all about people who obsess over the rapture and promise people it's going to happen soon. That's what they're getting a crown for. And over here in Revelation, Jesus is promising he'll come quickly and he needed to hold on to that crown. In other words, don't stop making YouTube videos obsessing over the rapture and idolizing it and telling people it's going to happen. Don't stop doing that and don't stop watching those videos either because that's the same as your crown being stolen. How far off base can you be? How far off base can you be? It's like their entire Christian life is centered around this. That's all they think about. That's all they talk about. That's all they care about. You can preach the gospel all you want. We should be. But you can't really truly effectively evangelize without the prophecy of God. And it what? does not matter how big your congregation is, how many books. And the prophecy of God, according to her, based on this video, this video alone, I'm surmising the prophecy she's talking about is rapture soon, look at the news. Rapture soon, look at the news. You can't preach, yeah, you know, you can go preach the gospel as much as you want. Yeah, 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 whatever. That's, that's actually a minor thing if you just preach the gospel. But if you add to it a little bit of the fire of rapture soon, look at the news... Now you're really talking about some serious power. <laughs> that is what she just said. Books you've written and sold, or how much money you rake in in a Sunday service. Mm. If you have no regard for Israel or Bible prophecy, <laughs> you may just reap oh, some consequences it. for that, <laughs> especially because you're doing your congregation oh, a great it. disservice. Oh, wow. Just wow. Everything wrong with the modern dispensational heresy in just a nutshell. Yeah, who cares about Jesus? Who cares about the gospel? If you're doing that, that's fine. But what you really ought to be doing, man, is talking about rapture soon, look at the news, and supporting the modern state of Israel. Just insanity. Absolute insanity, man. Let me tell you that the hour is far too late for oh. pastors or any of us to be worried about someone oh, okay. leaving the congregation or offending someone or ah okay so the hour is far too late she says and of course we know she means rapture within months because all of them that's what they mean when they say rapture soon we're in the season blah 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 blah, blah. it's always rapture within months from now at the most i mean here she is like with all this urgency oh the hour is too late okay if it's so late then what'd you spend i don't know a couple of hours making this video for just just move on forget it you're not going to change the entire church into your way of thinking just forget it move on do what you think you should do and and leave the rest to god and and stop wasting time you have no time you just spent two to three hours most likely shooting this video planning the video editing the video whatever you could have been doing the thing you think you should be doing instead of scolding other people who aren't going to listen right if it's so late as you claim or being called a conspiracy theorist for our eschatological views yeah. the enemy has blurred the vision of many christians and has lulled many to sleep yeah see she just pissed off that people call her a conspiracy theorist this is really just a a thing because she's annoyed at other people and you know? i wonder if god's eyes are filled with tears or with fire I don't know. Ooh. Maybe they're filled with both right now. Whoa, that, that was deep, man. Tears and fire. So, Michelle, if you really want to help in understanding, maybe those comments I made will help you. I don't know. I mean, fewer and fewer people are paying attention to the, all of your sensationalism and your hype. You guys are killing your own media empires. <laughs> You guys have established these li this little media empire 
around about a million people or so who who are who are addicted to the rapture any second and you're slowly killing it because you don't know when to shut your mouths instead you want more we want every church every week or every month or you know on an ongoing basis to have prophecy updates because if they don't you know i don't know I, I guess if they don't then maybe people will stop talking about it altogether i, I don't explain to me michelle why you care and and then explain to me how more promises every week every day every minute of a soon rapture isn't actually going to kill your system entirely because people are going to stop believing you i mean the more i think about it, the more i'm like hey continue on by all means keep making fake promises that prove to be untrue so that fewer people believe you the next time. Keep doing it. You're, you're digging your own hole. So I'm not deeply troubled. Please don't be. Don't be deeply troubled. Don't be deeply troubled. Just open your eyes. Start listening to other people. Because, you know, so far your track record has been pretty bad. <laughs>